Good morning. Good morning and welcome to our key sit welcome. Um <laughs> I can say welcome. Um you've now joined our key stage two reading. So I'm just gonna wait for a few more people to join. Just let's see who we have this morning and we'll begin very shortly. And I'm in a very good mood because it's Friday. Even though I'm not sure who's waving, but hello. Um, so if you're on YouTube, I have now um, allowed for comments. Um, so you can comment during the lesson. Hi, Harry. Hi, Athena. Good to see you. Um, so you can let me know if you're watching, you want me to say hello, or when I ask for ideas, you can type them up. I'll give you some time to type because I know it takes longer to type. Just remember on both um, YouTube and Instagram that um, it's not necessarily a place for you to have a chat. It's more for you to engage with the lesson, okay? Um, so that you're showing me that you're listening and that you're having a go, okay? Rather than having a chat with your friends, okay? Hi, Leon. Hi, Belle. Well done, I can see lots of you are watching. Is it Sahara? Um, just wait for a couple more people and then we'll begin, okay? Um, maybe while we're waiting, let's recap our lesson from yesterday. So, ah, super, Fergus, I turned on the comments, especially for you, because you um, asked if I could do that and I've done that, but it just means that you have to be super sensible with anything that you're writing, um, anything that you're writing when I'm doing my lesson, okay? You have to be very sensible and I have to trust you that you're going to write something, um, that anything you write is for the lesson, okay? Good morning, Isabella. Good morning, um, Sahara. Yes, I knew it was Sahara. Fantastic. Um, so let's recap our lesson from yesterday. So we have now got to the part where James is has been sent to clean the peach or to tidy up after, um, to tidy up all the mess from the aunties making all that money from the peach that actually belongs to um, James, okay? But he has discovered something. What has he discovered in that last sentence that we read yesterday? Who can tell me? Yep, he has discovered a hole in the side of the peach, okay? I wonder what he's going to find next, okay? Um, and yesterday, your task was to use... Um, he's discovered hope, well done. Oh, a hole. I thought you said a hope. <laughs> oh, no, you weren't here. Well, we're, we're letting you know what's happened. So yesterday, the part that we got up to, James has gone outside. He's at the, he's standing in front of the peach, and he is he has found a hole. Okay, um, okay, Fergus. So you can um, join in now. But basically, he's just found a hole, and we're going to see what happens next. Okay. And um, yesterday, your task was to describe the characters or describe the peach using similes and metaphors. Okay. And we went through what similes and metaphors were. If you didn't get to watch. Um, if you didn't get to watch yesterday's lesson, it is on YouTube um, for you to have a look at. Um, who? Hi there. Who's that? I'm not sure who that is, but hello. And we are ready to start. So we're going to go from chapter 10, if you're reading with us, if you're joining in. Ah, oh, super. I thought it was, um, I thought it was James. Superstar James. So you are tuned in. Hello, Luca and Matisse. Well done. You are joined in. Just in time for us to start our reading. Well done, Tyler. You're joined in from round the corner. <laughs> okay, chapter 10. It was quite a large hole, the sort of thing an animal about the size of a fox might have made. James knelt down in front of it and poked his head and shoulders inside. He crawled in. He, cre he kept on crawling. This isn't a hole, he thought excitedly. It's a tunnel. The tunnel was damp and murky. Well done, William, you're listening. And all around him, there were the curious, bittersweet smell of fresh peach. The floor was soggy under his knees, the walls were wet and sticky, and peach juice was dripping from the ceiling. James opened his mouth and caught some of it, some of it on his tongue. It tasted delicious. 
He was crawling uphill now, as though the tunnel were leading straight towards the very center of the gigantic fruit. Every few seconds, he paused and took a bite out of the wall. The peach flesh was sweet and juicy and marvelously refreshing. Hi, Patrick and Martha. He crawled on for several more yards and then suddenly, bang, the top of his head bumped into something extremely hard, blocking his way. <sighs> I wonder what it is. He glanced up. In front of him, there was a solid wall that seemed as at first as though it were made of wood. He touched it with his fingers. It certainly felt like wood, except that it was very jagged and full of deep grooves. Good heavens, he said. I know what this is, is what this is. I've come to the stone in the middle of the peach. Ah, it's the stone in the middle of the peach. Hi, Ava and Jack. Good heavens, he said. I know what this is. I've come to the stone in the middle of the peach. That's where he's come. Hey, Jago. Then he noticed that there was a smell, a small door cut into the face of the peach stone. He gave a push, it swung open. He crawled through it and before he had time to glance up and see where he was, he heard a voice saying, look who's here. And another one said, we've been waiting for you. James stopped and stared at the speakers, his face white with horror. He started to, he started to stand up, but his knees were shaking so much he had to sit down again on the floor. He glanced behind him, thinking he could bolt back into the tunnel the way he had come, but the doorway had disappeared. There was now only a solid brown wall behind him. So, um, hi David, I'm glad you're watching. Let's see who else has joined us. Super Sahara, que hablas español. Nos vemos a las dos. Um, so, who do you think he has seen? Hi Chloe. Who do you think he's seen? Who is there waiting for him inside the peach? Have a little guess. Let's have some predictions. Who's there waiting for him inside the peach? If you've read this book before, don't cheat. <laughs> um, but who's waiting for him inside the peach? Who do we think? Have a little think or tell someone that you're sitting with or someone next to you. The creatures. Yes, I think it's the creatures. What do you mean the creatures? What kind of creatures are they? What are we thinking they are? Thinking about those characters we met at the beginning. A spider, super, Miss Spider, okay. Who else might we see? You're remembering those, those um, ah, super remembering those characters at the beginning. Hey Kate, and all the other insects, well done. Enormous bugs, oh I love that adjective, fantastic. Chapter 11, James's large frightened eyes traveled slowly round the room. The creatures, some sitting on chairs, others reclining on the sofa, were all watching him intently. Watch me intently. Really watching, really looking. Creatures, or were they insects? An insect is usually something rather small, is it not? A grasshopper, for example, is an insect. An insect. So what would you call if what would you call it if you saw a grasshopper as large as a dog? As large as a large dog. You could hardly call that an insect, could you? There was an old green grasshopper as large as a large dog sitting directly across the room from James now. And next to the old green grasshopper, there was an enormous spider. And next to the spider, there was a giant ladybird with nine black spots on her scarlet shell. Oh, what a super description. Ah, superstar Danny. Each of these three was squatting upon a magnificent chair. On a sofa nearby, reclining comfortably in curled up position, there were there were a centipede and an earthworm. On the floor, over in the far corner, there was something thick and white that looked as though it might be a silkworm, but it was sleeping soundly and nobody was paying any attention to it. Every one of these creatures was at least as big as James himself, and in the strange greenish light that shone down from somewhere in the ceiling, they were absolutely terrifying to behold. I'm hungry, the spider announced suddenly, staring hard at James. I'm famished, the old green grasshopper said. 
So am I, the ladybird cried. The centipede sat up a little straighter on the sofa. Everyone's famished, he said. We need food. Four pairs of round, black, glassy eyes were all fixed upon James. Oh, how do we think James is feeling? Put yourself in James's shoes. Imagine you are James. How are you feeling? Tell me, how are you feeling? I'd be feeling a little bit scared. Have we got any synonyms for scared? We're always thinking of better 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 words than just those simple words terrified super job how are we feeling what other words could we use confused worried scared terrified superstars frightened that's a good word petrified oh yes definitely petrified any other words for me ah oh, best students ever weirded weirded out super creeped out <clears throat> Let's go and let's see what happens next. The centipede made a wriggling movement with his body as though he were about to glide off the sofa, but he didn't. There was a long pause and a long silence. The spider, who happened to be a female spider, opened her mouth and ran a long black tongue del delicately over her lips. Aren't you hungry? She asked suddenly, leaning forward and addressing herself to James. Poor James was backed up against the far wall, shivering with fright and much too terrified to answer. What's the matter with you, the old green grasshopper asked. You look positively ill. He looks, he looks as though he's going to faint any second, the centipede said. Oh my goodness, the poor thing, the ladybird cried. I do believe he thinks it's him that we are wanting to eat. <clears throat> yeah, I thought so. There was a roar of laughter from all sides. Oh, what a fantastic way of describing a roar of laughter. Oh dear, oh dear, they said. What an awful thought. You mustn't be frightened, the ladybird said kindly. We wouldn't dream of hurting you. You are one of us now. Didn't you know that? You are one of the crew. We're all in the same boat. We've been waiting for you all day long, the old green grasshopper said. We thought you were never going to turn up. I'm glad you made it. So cheer up, my boy, cheer up, the centipede said. And meanwhile, I wish you'd come over here and give me a hand with these boots. It takes me hours to get them all off by myself. Chapter 12. Ah, uh, so there was no need for James to, to be to be scared, but of course he was feeling scared. But they're saying that he's in the same boat or he's the same as them. I wonder why they're saying that. James decided that this was most certainly not a time to be disagreeable. So he crossed the room to where the centipede was sitting and knelt down beside him. Thank you so much, the centipede said. You are very kind. You have a lot of boots, James murmured. I have a lot of legs, the centipede answered proudly, and a lot of feet, 100 to be exact. There he goes again, the earthworm cried, speaking for the first time. He simply cannot stop telling lies about his legs. He doesn't have anything like a, like a hundred of them. He's only got 42. The trouble is that most people don't bother to count them. Ah, they just take his word. And anyway, there isn't nothing marvellous, you know, centipede about having a lot of legs. Poor fellow, the centipede said, whispering in James' ear. He's blind. He can't see how splendid I look. In my opinion, Earthworm said, the really marvellous thing is to have no legs at all and to be able to walk just the same. Hi, Naomi. I'm so glad you're watching. You call that walking, cried the centipede. You're a slitherer, that's all you are. You just slither along. I glide, said the earthworm primly. You, primly, you are a slimy beast, answered the centipede. I am not a slimy beast, the earthworm said. I am a useful and much loved creature. Ask any gardener you like. And as for you, as for you, I am a pest, the centipede announced, grinning broadly and looking round the room for approval. He is so proud of that, the ladybird said, smiling at James, though for the life of me I cannot understand why.
I am the only pest in the room, cried the centipede, still grinning away, unless you count old green grasshopper over there. But he is long past it now. He is too old to be a pest anymore. The old green grasshopper turned his huge black eyes upon the centipede and gave him a withering look. Young fellow, he said, speaking in a deep, slow, scornful voice, I have never been a pest in my life. I am a musician. <clears throat> hear, hear, said the ladybird. James, the centipede said, your name is James, isn't it? Yes. Well, James, have you ever in your life seen such a marvellous, colossal centipede as me? I certainly haven't, James answered. How on earth did you get to be like that? Very peculiar, the centipede said. Very, very peculiar in indeed. Let me tell you what happened. I was messing about in the garden under the old peach tree and suddenly a funny little green thing came wriggling past my nose. Bright green it was and extraordinarily beautiful and it looked like some kind of tiny stone or crystal. Oh, but I know what that was, cried James. It happened to me too, said the ladybird. And me, Miss Spider said. Suddenly, there were little green things everywhere. The soil was full of them. I actually swallowed one, the earthworm declared proudly. Hi, Noemi. Well done, Scarlet. Hi, all of you. I, I, so did I, the ladybird said. I swallowed three, centipede cried. But who's telling the story anyway? Don't interrupt. It's too late to tell stories now, the old green grasshopper announced. It's time to go to sleep. I refuse to sleep in my boots, the centipede cried. How many more are there to come off, James? I think I've done about 20 so far, James told him. Then that leaves 80 to go, the centipede said. 22, not 80, shrieked the earthworm. He's lying again. <laughs> the centipede roared with laughter. Stop pulling the earthworm's leg, the ladybird said. This sent, this sent the centipede into hysterics. Pulling his leg, he cried, wriggling with glee and pointing at the earthworm. Which leg am I pulling? You tell me that. James decided that he rather liked the centipede. He was obviously a rascal, but what a change it was to hear somebody laughing once in a while. He had never heard Aunt Sponge or Aunt Spiker laughing aloud in all the time he had been with them. We really must get some sleep, the old green grasshopper said. We've got a tough day ahead of us tomorrow. So would you be kind enough, Miss Spider, to make the beds? So those were our three, um, those were our three chapters for today. Hi, Aserna. I'm glad that you're joining in. Um, and I'm just going to say a quick hello to everyone that's watching so that we can kind of get that um, over and done with. I'm glad that you're listening and I'm glad that you're enjoying. So what has happened? What has just happened? Who can tell me a quick summary or tell the person next to you or whoever you're with a quick summary of what's just happened in those three chapters and then I'm going to move on to what we're learning today. I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay, so you've had a chat about what's just happened. He's gone into the peach. He has met all these new creatures. They are insects, but they seem to be overgrown insects. I wonder why, why are they overgrown? Who can tell me why? What's happened to them? He met bugs that were giants, well done. He's found the insects, superstars. James has gone into the peach and he's found insects that can speak, super job Leon. They're being friendly to him, well done. Well done, Sahara. Well done, Nate. Is it Nathan? Oh no, it's um, Noemi. Fantastic. So he's found some peach. Some, um, he's found some peaches. He's found some insects in the um, in the peach. Okay. So today we're going to look at something. Um, it's not necessarily in the book, but I just thought it's something that we can cover. I thought that today's task can be predicting what's going to happen next and maybe writing what's going to happen next. And I'd like you to write what's going to happen next using fronted adverbials. Fronted adverbials, what is that? 
Does anyone who can tell me if you're in year three or four, this is something new to you. Um, so year five and six are going to help you with this. OK, fronted adverbials. Who can tell me Who can have a go? Well done. Good summary there. James has gone into the peach and found some insects. Well done. Right, fronted adverbials. Well done, I've got some examples. Suddenly. So a fronted adverbial is a description that comes at the beginning of, of a sentence to tell us how something is happening. Okay, so it comes at the beginning of the sentence to tell us how something is happening. It might tell us what time it's happening. It might tell us um, how often it's happening. It might tell us the place or how it's happening. Okay, so we're going to think of some sentences to um, tell to predict what's going to happen next. Okay, but we're going to think of some sentences first using fronted adverbials. And the really important thing about fronted adverbials is after you've written your fronted adverbial, you um, put a comma afterwards. So there's our comma, you use a comma, okay? So who can give me some fronted adverbials? So they're how something has happened. So I've got an example for you. Someone has said immediately. Someone has said, um, yes, it is a sentence starter. Well done, James. Someone has said um, um, soon after or finally. Or it can also be where. So inside the peach, comma or inside the sticky peach, comma. Okay, who can give me another one? First, well done. Suddenly, well done, fantastic um, adverbial. So why don't we think of a sentence to describe what happens next? Let's write one sentence for what happens next. While Miss Spider is making the bed, As quick as a flash, well done. Suddenly, recklessly, carefully, curiously, quickly. Oh, I'm loving all your sentences. As quick as a flash, let's start with that one. As quick as a flash, what did James do? Then we're gonna do our comma. What did James do as quick as a flash? Let me just move my phone back a bit so you can see the board, even though it's backwards. Right, as quick as a flash, what did James do? As quick as a flash, James. Oh, I like that sentence. Finally, it was time for bed. Well done. What can we say James did? As quick as a flash, what did James do? Let's just wait for that a minute to go past. He hurried to bed. James hurried to bed. And I like that you said hurried instead of just went. Okay, so there is an example of a sentence you might have in your writing today. Now, you're going to give me some examples of, give me some time fronted adverbials. So time fronted adverbials. So someone has already said immediately. Who can give me another time fronted adverbial? Suddenly. So it tells us the time that it happened in. Oh, scampered, I love that word. After. As soon, oh, um, let's think about past tense. So soon, we could say soon. All of a sudden. Well done, we've got lots of words. Now I'd like you to give me some uh, fronted adverbials for a place. A place, hi Dylan, a place. So it could be above, above the clouds, outside, in the peach. 
Inside the beach, the creatures sat waiting for James. Inside the beach, you can give me another location one. In the distance. In the distance, who can give me another one? Deep in the peach. Oh, that's a fantastic one, Noemi. Deep in the peach. All was quiet as the insects slept, but not all of them are asleep. In yours, maybe not all of them are asleep. Well done. Far away. Far away or in the distance. James could hear his horrid aunties shouting for him. Beyond the horizon, fantastic. I love it, fantastic. In the slimy, sticky peach, well done, Fergus. At the center of the peach, well done, Naomi. It's okay. Oh, well done, Maisie. Below, fantastic, that's a good one. In the deserted corner of the peach. Oh my goodness, I am so, so impressed. Every day you wow me, all of you. So well done, fantastic. Right, and then lastly, let's think of, oh, um, the manner in which it happens. So how, how it happens. So those words like sadly, happily, unexpectedly, who can give me some words like that? So that the manner in which it happens. So we've got sadly, and I'm gonna post these up on Instagram afterwards. Far away from his horrible aunties, super. Now give me the manner in which it happens. Recklessly, oh, I love that word. And I'm writing them with a capital letter because remember they're, gonna, they're going to come at the beginning of our sentence. And then we um, do a comma afterwards. Cautiously, One more, let's have one more. Quickly, cheerfully. Super, look at all those ideas you've come up with. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna stop us there. And I'm so proud of all of you, well done, because I think that you probably wanna get started on your task, um, especially because it's Friday, it's the last day of doing your tasks, and um, then you've got the weekend, and then I will see you on Monday. So, um, your task for today is to write a paragraph. If you are in year three or four, I'd like you to write one paragraph, um, so that's maybe like a couple of sentences, about what happens next, okay? But I would like, everybody to use fronted adverbials. Remember, you write your fronted adverbial and then a comma, okay? This is gonna help your reader to read it nice and, <clears throat> nice, um, to be able to read it with a flow, okay? So I'm gonna read our sentence that we wrote. As quick as a flash, James hurried to bed. Okay, that was our sentence for today. If you're in year five, six, I reckon we can do about three, three paragraphs to tell me what happens next, okay? What happens next? And you're going to predict. If you've read the book before, you don't have to copy what actually happens next. You can make up your own version, okay? Thank you for your super duper ideas this morning. I loved all your fronted adverbials and it sounds to me like you're ready to go, okay? Um, well done. I will see you all, um, I'll be back on Monday at 11 o'clock and we'll carry on with James and the Giant Peach. I've had a few um, ideas for which book we will do next, but this book will probably take us about two weeks. Um, and I will be doing my Spanish lesson today at two o'clock. At two o'clock, I will be doing a Spanish lesson for everyone. It's a beginner's lesson, but I'll be doing a Spanish lesson with my mama at two o'clock. So if you'd like to join that, I will see you then, okay? If not, enjoy doing your task. You can post it on Seesaw or your parents can send it to me on Instagram. It's completely up to you. Thank you for joining. I'm Miss Lopez and I'm so proud of all of you for watching and continuing to have a go at all the tasks every day. Lots of love. See you. Good morning, everyone, and bye.